All right. Well, hey, thank you, Arpit, for the kind introduction and and uh, welcome, everyone. It's a, a real honor to be with you again this year. And um, it's certainly been a, a, a year. And it's hard to believe that it's been more than two years since this global pandemic really forever changed the way we work and the way we connect. And uh, it is no longer just work in the office versus work from home. The new normal is work from everywhere. And um, despite this shift brought on by COVID-19, uh, AT&T has been on a journey uh, of change for many years. And keeping our customers connected no matter where they are has long been the heartbeat of this company. And just last month, uh, AT&T celebrated 146 years of innovation. And we will continue building on that legacy uh, with the people uh, that we serve. And so um, the work we do is just really critical just to millions of people and businesses and first responders. So I'm really, really proud to be part of this, uh, this firm. Um, so let's get started here. And um, let me talk a bit about uh, what's been going on at AT&T with respect to the network. I'm very proud to say that our network withstood the unprecedented demands uh, during the pandemic, thanks to the forward-looking strategy, investments, and the work we put into our open initiatives in the past decade. Um, specifically, the virtualization of our network is the foundation of everything we do, and open source technology is a major part of this. Um, having a mostly virtualized and software-enabled network enables us to respond rapidly to new demands on the network. And even those caused by an extended worldwide pandemic and supply chain pressures that I know we're all dealing with here. Um, the pandemic made us extremely aware of how vital broadband access is, be it fiber or 5G, not only for enterprises, but public safety and education and also just in our everyday lives and interactions. And so the new normal has put us at the forefront of broadband connectivity from anywhere to everywhere. And this fuels uh, the need for a new generation of converged connectivity services that meets customers' specific needs uh, from bandwidth to, to more simplified user experiences. So today I'd like to share with you um, uh, our choice in, in adopting open systems and how that's paid back huge dividends to this new normal that we're all living in. So um, let me share some stats with you here. So when it comes to our network at at and even without the pandemic, we were carrying more data than ever before. Um, in fact, our global network carries more than 525 petabytes of data traffic on an average day. As you can see, this growth has not slowed and continues to increase. And I'm hoping here the slide will change because um, it looks like it's behind here. There we go. So you can see this uh, really unprecedented growth that we've seen across the network. Um, and But as everyone is aware, the global supply chain to support this growth has faced disruptions with factory shutdowns at COVID hotspots uh, around the world and also many, many shipping log jams. And so when the supply chain challenges hit, we were able to maintain and grow our stock of open compute platform hardware in our warehouses. This hardware is the disaggregated platform that is based on Broadcom Silicon and a flexible distributed disaggregated chassis design. This can be deployed in a pizza box or as a chassis cluster with multiple boxes interconnected via a fabric switch. And as network demands shift, we could deploy this stock of hardware in our network whether at the edge of the network needing one terabit to a customer data center at a peering connection needing 10 terabits 
or deep inside our network as our MPLS core routers need typically over 100 terabits of, of capacity. And this is really important. To enable such a widely varying router personality, all we needed to do was load the right software onto the common hardware. And distributing that software is one of the things that is not impacted by these challenges in the physical supply chain world. So this was really a huge benefit for us. We are now well into our journey to converge this disparate edge implementations we have today with common software and hardware driving uniformity, simplification and agility. AT&T now has over 75,000 open hardware platforms in production in our network today. And we now have 30% of our core backbone traffic on open hardware. Our cloud strategy has also benefited us as well and how it's enabled us to separate physical compute infrastructure and the software innovation that's riding on top of it. Thanks to these investments and our commitment to collaborative open source initiatives, AT&T's network was able to withstand the new normal demands. And as you can see from these examples, that's the power of having an open software centric network. It enables a much more agile dynamic network that can elastically scale to meet our customers' demands. The power of open is critical to at and It enables a richer and more diverse ecosystem of solution providers with plug and play at the boundaries of services and new network capabilities. This is an area where at and has a great deal of experience. We are proud to not only contribute and share our expertise, but also to champion and apply open solutions on a massive scale. So speaking of open solutions on a massive scale, we are growing the open ecosystem in the radio access network space by focusing on open interfaces and components. To accomplish this, AT&T is working with the ORAN Alliance to rapidly address the needs and priorities of the operator community, driving and developing specifications for relevant end-to-end -end open RAN solutions. To rapidly drive commercial availability of these key ORAN capabilities, at and is leading several use cases, including MIMO-based capabilities and optimization of network capacity. MIMO is all about maximizing wireless bandwidth while minimizing interference, creating the best quality and user experience. MIMO will also play a critical role in achieving AT&T's network capacity enhancements for new use cases, especially those involving increased uplink usage. By the way, optimized MIMO is also green. It reduces the spectrum and power required to transfer each bit. And to accelerate the availability of carrier grade commercial products, ORAN is verifying and validating its own specifications as well as open source implementations through the biannual proof of concepts and plug fests that we have deployed across the world. ORAN is also helping us and the industry to shift from multiple closed vendor tools towards an open vendor neutral management solutions across the vendors RANs enabling carrier grade automation and analytics to help optimize networks. This open systems approach with open interfaces enables a marketplace for third party solutions. So ORAN is only one area of work with the open source community. Let me highlight a couple more examples. To demonstrate how end-to-end -end 5G services can be orchestrated across the RAN and the packet core, the Linux Foundation's networking 5G super blueprint that RPID alluded to brings together a variety of mature open source-based technologies, including cloud orchestration. 
Our cloud strategy for standalone mobility poor and beyond makes the cloud native concepts a significant focus here at at and We see the cloud native computing foundation as a key innovator and an enabler in accelerating the evolution of cloud native concepts towards opening up and becoming more telco grade solutions available to all. In fact, the CNCF serves as the home for many of the fastest growing open source projects that we use here at at and including Kubernetes, Prometheus, and Helm. So the open technologies developed in these communities are essentially in providing, are essential in providing end-to-end -end services from the edge to the core, as well as for converging mobility and fiber broadband connectivity. AT&T is working to enable rich ecosystems of connectivity-based solutions for customers. Consider the connectivity-derived disruption is playing out across almost every major industry today. Think about software-defined connected cars, smart buildings in the real estate space, logistics startups that offer Uber-style tracking for packages, and Peloton shaking up the fitness business. at and connectivity has enabled many of these connected products. But to build a connected product today, business leaders need to navigate a bewildering variety of risks. As a company, we wanna guide our customers safely through these con connectivity derived disruptions. We can differentiate our network capabilities by integrating our suite of products and platforms that can create, that they can create without third parties and without the need to deploy heavy capital. So AT&T is undergoing a longer term shift towards converged fiber and mobility con connectivity services that together will be positioned to support software defined value added services on top. This will be accomplished by opening up our connectivity and network capabilities that use our converged mobility and fiber broadband network in new and interesting ways by assembling innovative services that focus on customer experiences. Our connectivity and network capabilities will be exposed through an on-demand model similar to the cloud where they can be procured and managed on demand through portals and APIs on a self-service basis. These cloud-like portals and APIs will make it simple for solutions uh, providers and our customers to define and manage an experience that best meets their needs at any moment in time on demand. So, we need to accelerate the realization of true multi-vendor interoperability based on ORAN abstractions and open interfaces. At the heart of this are the information and data models for model-driven open architectures, along with copyright licensing approaches to facilitate the use of standards-based content. Specifications and implementations are not enough on their own. To achieve carrier-grade interoperability, we need strong certification programs to ensure open interfaces. Wireless and fiber broadband services are undergoing rapid and significant technological changes as we enter a new age, a new age of connectivity that is fueled by the widespread growth and availability of converging broadband services. Together, 5G and fiber are providing greater ubiquity, reliability, security, capacity, and of course, speed. So many exciting open source projects have helped the AT&T network handle the tsunami of data, the pandemic and this new era, new era in connectivity have created. I wanna thank all the open source communities for your contributions and the Open Networking and Edge Executive Forum for the opportunities to share this with you today. And I want to thank you all for your time, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the forum. And so with that, Arpit, I'll hand it back to you for a couple of uh, questions.
Okay, thank you, Andre. Uh, let's see, are we, all right, there you go. Very good, that, that was very insightful as always. And, uh, you know, I know people uh, have a lot of questions, you know, feel free to ask uh, generic questions, you know, not vendor specific. Clearly those are not something that we can answer on air, but uh, I do have a, have a, have a question you know, just from a from a timing perspective, right? You have been keynoting uh, these kind of events for years now, and you have been participating, and you have been driving the industry leadership towards you know what the right thing or the next thing is. Uh, can you can you give a, a quick overview of how you have seen over the last several years a, a shift in the open community? you know, from a mindset or a participation or contribution or a focus perspective, you know, any, any insights on that and, and what should they be doing, you know, in the next two, three years as, as a community, because most of, most of them are listening uh, on the call today. No, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, I, I've always sort of thought the network has been sort of this, this orphan stepchild when it comes to uh, comparing to what's been going on in in compute and storage. And I think, um, you know, to your question, what's sort of changed over the years is uh, really seeing how the hyperscalers are now, uh, as well as the telcos are now coming together more uh, on this. Um, certainly in our space with, uh, in the telco arena, um, you know, some of the largest cloud service providers have really stepped up uh, as we've seen actually within the last year or so uh, to really get involved in what it takes to handle carrier grade uh, workloads. And uh, certainly at and you know, we worked uh, very closely with Microsoft and what they're doing with Azure uh, to make that um, uh, better position for telcos. But even watching what's happening in Google and AWS is also really great to see. And you, you know, you've certainly heard a lot of announcements, acquisitions, transactions that are helping facilitate this. And so um, I think that's kind of the big, I would say one of the biggest uh, changes that we're seeing. And I think this is great because it's, it's gonna open up a lot of these developer ecosystems uh, to, to be more exposed to like what we're doing here today and get these developers more interested in finding out what can the network do to make their applications, their experiences, whatever their product or services uh, better. Uh, because the network more and more has become a critical component behind that. So that's what I would say is probably one of some of the bigger trends. Well, that's, that's amazing. And, and, you know, I think from the participation and from from the press, and as you say, from the m and transaction and the value in the ecosystem, we've already seen tremendous uh, partnerships and collaboration, right? Between not just the cloud service providers and the telecom, not just in US, but also globally. And the end users like us, you know, individual as well as enterprises, right? That can build on that are, are using, uh, using the building blocks. And the great news is, um, open source is not, you know, it, it's completely known to the cloud service providers, right? They build the clouds on open source, right? They won. So versus we on a telecom side had to go through a transformation, you know, thanks to your effort at, at at and and all that. So uh, very good. Uh, I think we, yes, we are, we are at the exact hour um, that we need to move on, but Andre, really appreciate and, you know, hope to see you in person at the Open Networking and Edge Summit in Seattle in November, right? But uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Arpit. Thank you. Thank you.